Working in excavations can be dangerous. Soil doesn't look heavy, but a cubic yard of soil weighs about 3,000 pounds. That is roughly the weight of a sedan. It does not take a large collapse to trap a worker under a deadly mound of soil. Excavations deeper than five feet, not in stable rock, require protective systems. The employer will select a protective system that's appropriate for the soil type and the work conditions. Is the excavation less than five feet deep? If it is, and a competent person has inspected it and verified that there is no risk of cave-in, then the excavation may be made with vertical sides and no protective systems. Protective systems are also not required for excavations deeper than five feet that are in stable rock. If the excavation is deeper than five feet or there is a potential for cave-in, the excavation must be sloped, shored, or shielded. Sloping is the technique of shaping the excavation sides away from the workers to protect them from potential cave-ins. This can be done with a flat slope or with benching. Shoring uses mechanical structures to reinforce the sides of the excavation to prevent cave-in. A shield is a structure that is designed to resist the force of a cave-in and to protect employees inside the structure. So which to use, sloping, shoring, or shielding? It really depends on the conditions of your work site. Sloping is often seen as the easiest and safest option. However, sloping requires a large area around the excavation. If you are laying two eight-foot segments of pipe at about six feet deep, you will need to remove about 255 cubic yards of soil to slope it properly. Using two trench shields, you would have to remove about 79 cubic yards of soil. So you can potentially save a lot of time with shoring or shielding. It also reduces the time and expense of backfill and restoration. On the other hand, shoring and shielding requires more equipment and technical expertise. The competent person will determine the appropriate method. Let's talk about sloping. Type A soil may be sloped at three quarters horizontal to one vertical. That's about 53 degrees. Type B soil can be sloped at one horizontal to one vertical, which is 45 degrees. Type C soil can be sloped at one and one half horizontal to one vertical, which is a slope of 34 degrees. There are some special circumstances allowed. In type A soil, you can have a lower section of the excavation with vertical sides up to three and a half feet deep and then slope it afterwards. Refer to Appendix B for those criteria. Shoring is the reinforcement of the sides of an excavation to prevent collapse. There are two basic types of shoring, timber and aluminum hydraulic. Timber shoring uses wood with predetermined configurations to reinforce the sides of the excavation. Here is a basic timber shoring system. Struts, also called cross braces, connect the two sides of the excavation and provide the reinforcement strength. The whale is positioned parallel to the excavation face, whose sides bear against the vertical members of the shoring system or the earth. Uprights are the vertical members of the shoring system placed in contact with the earth. Normally there is space between the uprights, but if there is no space, it's called sheeting. Appendix C covers timber shoring configurations, which vary by soil type. Let's say that we are doing work in a trench that is eight feet deep and nine feet wide. It is in type B soil. Let's check the chart in Appendix C. For cross braces, we have the option of placing them from six to 10 feet apart. Let's go with eight feet apart. This gives us a cross brace size of six inches by six inches and a vertical spacing of five feet apart. The whales must be eight inches by 10 inches and placed five feet apart. The uprights must be two inches by six inches and spaced no more than three feet apart. So that is the required timber shoring configuration for our trench. You can use these charts in Appendix C to determine the proper timber shoring configuration for your excavation. This chart may not be used for excavations that are deeper than 20 feet. A hydraulic shoring system uses prefabricated hydraulic cylinder struts and or whales. These are usually light enough to be installed by one person, are gauge regulated to provide an even distribution of pressure, and can be easily adjusted to different lengths and widths. 
The configuration requirements for aluminum hydraulic shoring can be found in Appendix D. It is important to emphasize that shoring is not an improvisational job-made system. It needs to be constructed with approved design and loading requirements. Watch how effective this poorly designed shoring system is. Can you imagine if someone was in there? A shield is a structure that is designed to withstand the forces of a cave-in. Shields can be permanent structures or be portable and designed to move along as the work progresses. They are usually referred to as trench boxes or trench shields. They must be installed in a manner which prevents movement of the shield. Employees must always work inside the shield and be protected from cave-ins while entering or exiting. Now you may be wondering, aren't there more protective system options? What about those new pneumatic shoring systems? How about trench boxes? This is where the registered professional engineer comes in. If the employer has written tabulated data on site that is created by a registered professional engineer, sloping, shoring, or shielding systems can be used that comply with that data also have a registered professional engineer custom design a system for you. And remember, any excavation deeper than 20 feet requires an engineer designed protective system. Trenches deeper than 4 feet require a fixed means of egress, like a ladder. The ladders must be spaced so that the worker does not have to travel more than 25 feet to access it. Workers in shields may not leave the shield to access the ladder. And here's why. Walkways must be provided if workers are required to cross over excavations. Guardrails must be provided if workers are six feet or greater above a lower level. If there is a chance of a hazardous atmosphere or an oxygen deficiency, excavations deeper than four feet must be tested before entry. Be especially mindful of areas with exposed sewers or oil fields. In areas like this, hydrogen sulfide tends to accumulate. If the atmosphere is hazardous, respiratory protection must be provided or the area must be adequately ventilated.